Hey everybody, welcome to the special preview show for Invicta FC 22. It goes down March 25th, Kansas City, Missouri, Scottish Rite Temple. A familiar home for Tanya Evinger and her challenger, Yana Kuniskaya. We go back to November of 2016. We closed out the year with, honestly, one of the more controversial bouts in Invicta FC history. Tanya Evinger, defending her title for the second time in her reign, came up short to Yana Kuniskaya in one of the more awkward endings of a fight you will ever see in your life. And to break that down with me, my commentating partner, the always lovely and tonight ever patient Julie Kenzie as we uh, record into the wee hours, uh, what feels like the morning. But uh, Julie, we're back where we left 2016 and uh, we're going to crown a Bantamweight champion. Tanya Evinger left that night uh, away uh, from her belt. It went back to Russia. It went with Yana Kuniskaya. Um, but it was temporary. It was fleeting. The Missouri Athletic Commission uh, looked at what had happened and ultimately decided there's a little bit too much tomfoolery there. No no offense towards Mike England. He thought he did uh, everything right. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he did not. And to break that down a little bit, let's go back to that night in November. Tell me what exactly happened in the ending moments of that bout and where, where does the controversy really set in? Well, it's funny that they're the ending moments of this bout when it was only about a minute 59 into the first round that this happened. Tanya Evinger did what Tanya does best. She took her opponent down. She took Yana Kunitskaya down right away up against the, the fence, was delivering some pretty good ground and pound. Yana had very nice um, awareness off of her back. She was able to use the cage to climb her legs into an arm bar. Um, as Tanya went to stack, it was on her right arm. As Tanya went to stack, she pressed her left knee into Yana's head. Um, she wasn't getting enough leverage that way, so she stood up into that. She put her heel, her left heel, onto Yana's head and began to pull out of it. Now, referee Mike England, uh, from his vantage point and for what he saw, he thought that Tanya was stomping on her head. From my perspective, when I watched the fight, it didn't look like a stomp. It looked like she was planting on the head. However, he came in, he tapped on on Tanya and was just like, you can't do that, you can't do that. Tanya goes to adjust. Yana, very patient, very composed, doing what she should have done, continued to extend the arm to the tap. So Tanya's, you know, Tanya's complaint on that, which I think was well, I I, I mean, she got the, the, the decision overturned. She got it turned to a no contest. And her complaint in that was, he interrupted me. I was not doing anything illegal. I was stacking with my foot, which is completely legal. Yep. And um, the commission agreed with Tanya, and they overturned the fight. We knew we were going to make history that evening mm-hmm. in Kansas City. It was the 20th show in Invicta FC history. It was a landmark show. And we got the history, but not exactly the history I think we thought we were going to get. And, and, and it's because of that decision by Tim Lukanoff to overturn uh, the decision of Mike England and... We all make mistakes, right? Unfortunately, when you have high-pressure situations, you're going to make a, a mistake eventually, and and more often than not, there are consequences. I, I was happy that the Athletic Commission in Missouri looked at everything that they had, the tape, uh, you know, talked to Mike England, and, and largely went, okay, we, we need to take care of this and make this right. And the best part about combat sports is we get to do it again. We do. And to be honest, I think we're going to get a much more exciting fight this time around. Not that that wasn't exciting. We saw a brand new star emerge, somebody who tapped Tanya Evinger, who was on a 10 fight. I believe that was her 10th fight in a row. She was on a nine fight winning streak. She was touted as the person who you cannot ignore anymore. The one with so much momentum behind her career. So many notables that she'd beaten, like... uh, Irena Aldana in the UFC now. Cindy Dandwa in the UFC now. So many, me, I was in the UFC, she beat me. So many people that have gone on to these, you know, really big things. And here she is continuing to toil away. And then Yana comes in from Russia in her Invicta debut and in some people's eyes, took the belt home to Russia. Well, she actually literally did. I don't know if they're going to both walk out wearing the belt at this point, but I believe Tanya still retains the the title of champion. So the bout was ruled to a no contest, essentially meaning... It never happened, Mm -hmm. right? So you have to basically wipe it away from the history books. However, I don't believe Yana Kuniskaya has wiped it away from her mind. I know Tanya Evinger, who always has a chip on her shoulder, has a point to prove coming up here on the 25th. She hasn't wiped it from her mind. And the fans haven't 
forgotten about it. No, and I think there's a new level of intrigue going into this. I think, you know, from what I've been reading on social media and watching, Yana is actually doing her training at high altitude in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, she's putting a lot of pictures on her Instagram of training with former UFC champion and UFC challenger Holly Holm, um, doing a lot of her wrestling out of there, doing her striking there. Meanwhile, Tanya, when the stuff I've seen from her on social media, and she's usually a, a comedian on social media more than actually putting s so much of her training secrets, but um, a lot of kickboxing work, a lot yeah. of striking work. So and both of them are trying to enter into the other's territory, I believe. And let's not forget that Kuniskaya was a kickboxer by trade, but if you have a, a look behind you, you can see the, the action take place. It was all business for Triple Threat, Tanya Evinger. It was a quick takedown. It was a pass to Psy Control. And this is where she has set up shop so many times on fighters, and this is her world. But Yana Kuniskaya, look, she's already getting back to half and eventually gets back to full guard. Again, this is the kickboxer, Julie. This is the woman that is not supposed to want to be on the floor with Tanya Evinger. And if you ask anyone that has fought Tanya, they'll tell you that the pressure that she has from top position, it makes a lot of people wilt or at least reassess their game plan. You felt you've had... Tanya Evinger take you down and and, and 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 get on top and start to play her game. But look here, Yana Kuniskaya, back to full guard. Evinger stacking, and this is where it all begins. And you know, at this point, I remember Mike England actually calling on Yana to stop stop putting her toes in the cage, right. to, to climb the cage. But yep. I don't know, in this case, I, I feel like he may have been a little bit overzealous in all of his you know attention for this fight. However, she is clearly putting her toes in the cage. I don't know what we're when we're judging what's an infraction, sure. what's not an infraction at this point, who knows? Um, <laughs> but there it is. There's the arm bar. And, and you and I were calling this live going, okay, she may have something here. But the, there was the cage. The cage was at play. Yana really can't go belly down at this point. Um, Evinger is already using that knee, which is completely legal. And Evinger's stack is, it's a legitimate stack right there, but her elbow is still trapped yep. at this point. So it's kind of a game for her where she should have been kind of doing little jerks, little jerks. She's trying to do that. And maybe the motion of her is what, of her jerking her arm is what set my England, Mike England off and thought that it was a stomp. Yep. I didn't see a stomp to the head. I saw her put her heel on her head and grind a little bit. Um, There's the elation. Yana Kuniskaya stopped a storybook run in November. But it's wiped away now, and she gets that second opportunity. What, what is the most interesting part about this entire fight and the narrative to me is the fact that Kuniskaya came in, big underdog, mm -hmm. going up against one of the better inspirational stories in all of mixed martial arts. Again, Tanya Evinger was written off as past her prime, mm -hmm. one that wasn't going to live up to the potential that a lot of people thought she would have with this wrestling pedigree. A lot of people called her mentally weak and, and mentally, um, you know, uh, her mental game was a bit of a liability. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when, when, and it was, it's something that always had been a part of my repertoire and thinking about Tanya and game planning for Tanya, whether it's for me or for somebody else, is when Tanya's on, she is on. Right. But, you know, it had been a couple of years before we'd really seen that fire in her. And I think it was her, her fight with Adian Gomes that we actually saw, oh, Tanya, whoa whoa, Tanya's really Tanya-ing now. Like, and when she's in that zone, everything works together for her. I, I really believe that she's still at the top of her game. I think that Tanya can still right. legitimately, legitimately, excuse me, be anybody in this sport. However, Yana showed something there. She showed some tenacity there. With the ref yelling things, with things going on with Tanya, talking to the ref, she continued to hold onto that arm, arm. She continued to crank. For me, that shows somebody who is ice cold under pressure, who isn't going to crack, who's going to get what she wants out of a fight. I am very, very excited to see what Yana's going to be like this fight. I've heard some rumors that her cardio is off the hook right now. And we all know Tanya's game is a grinding yep. cardio game. I mean, here, when she rushed in to finish right away, that fantastic you know great but that may have worked against her a little bit right i mean there may have been a little bit some more emotion and play right there i know sure. she had a grudge going into this fight feeling that she was overlooked as the champion now i i, I who's who's to say who's going to be more pissed off at the other one i'm excited right. to see it no doubt about it and tanya evinger is the type of athlete that fights similar to that of the brand of the diaz brothers you know mm -hmm. it's like we're fighting on 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 you know, in this case, Saturday night, but it's so much more than that to Tanya because if you look at where Tanya's at in her career right now, this fight could be all or nothing. Mm -hmm. She's she's advanced, you know, long in the tooth in the fight game, long in the tooth as an athlete. I mean, she's been fighting or competing as a wrestler 
since you know, very young, very mm-hmm. young. And and if she's going to make that run to the UFC, it has to start now. I think it started five years ago, but that time, the, the sands and the hour clock are dwindling away and father time, mother nature, whatever you want to say, catches up with you. Tanya is an elite level athlete, but if, if you got to believe that if she's going to make that run, it's going to have to be sooner rather than later. And there are some questions that Yana Kuniskaya brought up to her and, and showed maybe that she has some weaknesses on the floor if she gets overconfident. Either we're going to see Tanya Evinger broken like we like some people thought that she was once upon a time, or we're going to see one of the most dangerous Tanya Evingers the sport has ever seen. Well, I'm, I'm putting my money on the ladder, TJ. I don't think we're going to see a broken Tanya Evinger. I think that... Um, despite being 35 years old and being in this fight game for a long time and being a wrestler for a long time, I still think that Tanya has quite, she's got another five years left in her career. Another five years, another, how many, how many fights has she had? Like a bazillion. (laughs) I mean, she's a pioneer. She's a pioneer. And and here's the thing is I I just, I I have a lot of faith in her from what I've seen and and, in the progress that I've seen. And I could be wrong. I'm wrong about a lot of things. Um, but you know. I, I do think that Tanya Avenger has way more left to give this game. And I think that hitting her stride is only going to, um, it's going to make her want to stay there on the top. And as for Yana Kuniskaya, I mean, welcome to Invicta. Right. My goodness, you come in here, your first performance, and you take the belt back home. That's incredible. You know, I think, who was the last person we saw that? Was it Livia Souza? Yeah. Her debut fight yeah. with us took the belt home. I mean, that's incredible. It's it's. It's a wonderful thing to see. It's a wonderful thing to see these international fight international fighters come mm-hmm. in and show the breadth of diversity that we have within this show. Small show that it may be. Right. You know, we have people from countries all over the world and we have people who surprise every single time they step on the mats. And so, you know, Yana Kunitskaya win or lose this next fight, she has definitely cemented a start of a legacy here in Invicta. I mean, you said welcome to Invicta. Also, welcome to mainstream notoriety mm-hmm. in, in women's mixed martial arts because for my money, you can make an argument that Tanya Evinger is top five in the world at 135, top three mm-hmm. in the world at 135. And on any given night, I'm I'm in your line of thinking that she can beat anybody. And, and that might not come to an end at, at this point. If she does fall or falter again or because I mean that's the thing too let's not let's not say that if Tanya Avenger loses to Yana Kuniskaya at all that it's a sign of where she's at because we saw that again Yana this this kickboxer can pull off arm bars and get I mean I think the most important thing when fighting Tanya Avenger and I think you can ask Irene Aldana this I think you can ask Colleen Schneider this it's not letting Tanya get comfortable and start fighting her game. And I'm almost just as impressed as the fact that Yana got her guard back after it was passed as I am the armbar sequence because it's very hard to give something to Tanya and take it back mm-hmm. because she's relentless. She is relentless and she's tough and she's savvy. She's seen everything at this point. So, yeah. to, you know, to catch somebody like that, everybody can be caught. At any given time, you, yeah. you can lose a fight in any way. Um, but to catch her with something like that and to have that mental edge that I tapped you, you actually tapped on me. You know, whether the ref stepped in or not, I felt you tap. That was you saying you quit in this moment. That's pretty important. That's an important mental um, hurdle for her or not hurdle. I guess it's a benefit for her. Right. It might be a mental hurdle for Tanya to get over. I don't know. But it's a benefit for Yana. It's It's got to be something that she's holding on to for dear life going into this knowing – I tapped you. I found a way to break you. I'm going to try and do this again. And that mental edge is something that we'll see how Tanya deals with that. While we may think it might be a mental edge for Yana, Tanya Evinger probably has something completely different to say about that. And that just goes to show who Tanya is as a fighter. All I can say is on March 25th, this is the most important fight for both of these athletes. I think it's one of the most important fights for the women's bantamweight division. I mean, the winner of this is going to walk out the Invicta FC champion in a main, main, main player when it comes to the landscape of 135 Anywhere. across the world. Mm-hmm. And Yana Kuniskaya looks to basically prove that what happened was not aided by Mike England. And Tanya Evinger, again, I know we saw her tap just moments ago via UFC Fight Pass, and it's on tape. Well, it's not in the history books. We know what happened. Mm -hmm. 
But you have to remember, Tanya Evinger is on this storybook run, a career run. She hasn't truly been defeated in a very long time. And she got a taste of what it's like to walk out upset. She's not going to come anywhere near that again if she can help it. And Yeah, that kind of thing. It either it either fuels you or it folds you. Yeah. So we're just going to have to find out. We're going to have to see what happens with her. And um, again, I have tremendous faith in Tanya Evinger, having been hit by her and tapped by her and dumped on my head by her right. before. I have faith in her. Now, I have faith in Yana Kunitskaya as well. She's doing the right things with her training. She's doing the right things in her approach to this fight. Tanya's fight was more with the commission than it was with Yana. Right. After Honestly, fight, as a was. whole, yeah, it was. Yeah. I mean, it was a two-minute fight where you can look at it as Tani was. Tani was in control the entire time until the arm bar happened. She got a takedown. She passed uh, the guard. She moved aside. She landed some strikes, and then Yana got half guard, moved back to full guard, and then really wasn't in control of the fight at all until the arm bar happened. And she was in the arm bar. Tanya was for maybe. 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. So for 15 seconds of a fight, she lost it, but ultimately ended up losing, which that, that is truly what makes mixed martial arts so great. You can win. I mean, Anderson Silva, Chael Sonnen. Chael Sonnen was in control for 23 minutes of that fight, but then got caught mm -hmm. in a triangle. And that's what makes mixed martial arts so great. In a fight like this, the fact that Shannon Knapp, Caitlin Young put their heads together and said, okay, you know, we, we have this no contest. Let's do the right thing. Let's give Yana her rematch. Let's let Tanya set the record straight. Let's figure it out. There will be no controversy. <laughs> Knock on wood. You never know. All right. I'm not going to go as far as say there's going to be no controversy. There's always going to be some kind of controversy. Right. But I believe that this fight is going to set a precedent just as overturning the commission ruling. Again, that's a really big deal. It is. A huge deal. It really is. Tanya made history once again, maybe not in the way she wanted to, but that's a huge deal. Um, and she, you know, she won her fight against the Missouri State, or with the Missouri State Athletic, however right. you want to phrase that. She won that fight. Now the question is, has she turned that radar completely on Yana, completely on what's going to happen on March 25th? And I guess it's it's our pleasure to see what happens. We got the best seat in the house, and of course everyone with the UFC uh, Fight Pass account also has a fantastic seat. Uh, March 25th, coming up here on UFC Fight Pass. Also, if you're in the area, you know you need to be inside the Scottish Rite Temple uh, it's going to be fantastic. So, Yana Kuniskaya, the challenger. It's weird to say that because the last <laughs> time we saw her, we called her the champion, taking on the reigning and defending Bantamweight champion, Tanya Avenger. Julie, I've got chills. I really do. <laughs> I'm very, very excited for this fight. This fight, like I said, this does something for the entire landscape, not just the Invicta Bantamweight division, across the world. This fight's going to mean something really big for the victor. Invicta FC 22 this Saturday night on UFC Fight Pass.